Well, good morning, good afternoon, good evening to you, my beautiful pen friends, and welcome to another video with your host, Andrew. Now, first off, I need to apologise for the lack of content over the last uh, week. I have been involved with a Lord of the Rings uh, fan fiction filming, and I was away all weekend. Plus, it was my birthday, and I just really needed a little bit of time off from pens. So, we're back again and um, for a very special look at a pen from Tamanuri Studios. So, let's roll those titles and see what we have. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, so here we go. We've got the Wet n Wise pen by Tamanuri Studios. So, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. But before we actually get into the actual uh, main content of this video, I'm gonna introduce you to Michael from Tamanuri Studios. He's gonna talk a little bit about some of the finishing techniques. And whilst I'm at it, I should mention that if you go onto my Instagram TV, which I'll have a link to in my description below, there is a little interview with him which talks about some of the techniques which he used to make this pen and also a little bit of general information about the regional techniques in the different um, prefectures of Japan. So please do go and watch that. Still, let's introduce you now to Michael, who's now going to talk about some of those uh, finishing techniques. Okay, one of the final polishings, the pen. It's already covered with many layers of uh, wazuri of Kiyomi Urushi. Very thin. I will show you in a moment how it's done. But first, I need to apply Migako powder, the finest abrasive I use for my fountain pens. And for this stage, which is one of the final stages in pen making, I will use just my hand to polish the pen. And it's now polished and screened. And I will apply last layer of Kiyomi Urushi. Uh, after which only final polishing and quality control will take place. I apply it with soft, lint-free cloth. for several seconds, maybe minutes, and then I will rub it off. And now, after several minutes, I rub off Kiyomi Urushi. It leaves just a tiny amount of Urushi, which is mostly in the, any micro scratches or pits on the pan. And this, in conjunction with polishing with Kiyomi Urushi, gives this incredible gloss. The Vasuri process does not add any thickness and a true layer to the surface of the pen. It just uh, smooths it out and brings the gloss. It's a polishing process. 
looked like a ring by itself. But still, it requires curing and taking care of the pen the usual way. That's it. One last polish tomorrow, and off we go. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you found that uh, informative. So let's have a look and see what we have in the box, and I'm going to give you some dimensions in a moment. So you're presented with this cardboard box which has got this beautiful textured finish. Um, we've got a, I'm guessing like a brass clip on here, and then it lifts up to present what you would be given. So inside we have got a little velvet um, pen pouch, which is very beautiful, matches the color of the pen. And then we have got a nice soft velvety top and velvety bottom. So even if you want to keep the pen presented like so, then it's going to um, protect your pen. Very nice. And especially with a rouge, even though it is very highly durable, you really want something to give it that little bit extra protection. Um, especially with the fact that this pen isn't necessarily the cheapest thing in the world. Okay, so let's put this pen up before we crack on. And there we go. We've got the dimensions for the pen as well as the ink capacity. Okay, so let's have a look at this pen. Right, so this is the Karanuri finish, which Michael has talked about in my IGTV and um, that little brief introduction on the, uh, the finishing techniques. And it really is beautiful. We've got five different shades of blue on here with silver particles interspersed. And hopefully from the close-ups, which you can see right now, you should see that this pen really is quite exceptionally beautiful. And those little nuances of the red on the underlying layers really do shine through. Okay, so let's start from the top of the pen and then work our way down. Okay, so from the top all the way down to the bottom, we'll start with a cap. We've got a flat top cop, flat top cap <laughs> even, and then it uh, comes down onto the main barrel, which is very, very beautiful, matches everything else on the appointments on the pen. There's no actual appointments in terms of trims or anything on here, so it makes it into a very simple and plain pen, which I love. Um, it's not flamboyant in that respect, only in perhaps the craft which has gone into actually making the finish. So let's just uncap the pen. Underneath we have got a Bok stainless steel nib and the extra fine point and we've got a plastic feed. In terms of holding the pen, it's very, very comfortable. The section is relatively long and it tapers in ever so slightly in a slightest um, bit of an hourglass shape. But yeah, it, it, it flares down and it's just really, really comfortable. Um, the threads are non-obtrusive. And then underneath, we have got a Schmidt converter, which is titled Beaufont Ink, which I believe Michael buys in, in, in bulk or uh, Navi from Wet and Wise, which is uh, the pen it is based on. So we'll talk a little bit about a little bit more about that uh, later on. Okay, so let's just put the barrel back on, and then it's a straight finish down to the end. There's no tapering on this whatsoever, like a lot of traditional pens. The pen doesn't post, and nor would you want to with it being a Rushi. So. Hopefully this pen would be comfortable. I appreciate that there are some people which have got larger hands where this may be verging on something which might be a little bit too small for you, but Michael does have other models which you can look out for. And he does use quite a few models from Wet and Wise and also I believe he still um, collaborates with Ranga pens in India. So there is plenty of options for those who want to have um, a slightly larger pen. Now, whilst I am on the topic, uh, Michael doesn't do custom work anymore, um, unless you're very special, okay? And I'm not special in any uh, shape or form, but he does not do custom work anymore. You can send him a pen to work on, but you have to allow him to do his craft on that pen in the way he sees fit. Now, you might be able to give him loose guidance to particular colors you like, but in terms of the finish and the techniques, it would be a, a mystery or he would um, discuss what he will do on that pen. Um, this does seem to be a bit of a growing trend for a lot of Rougie artists, and I can sort of understand it because 
you really, I guess when you're actually getting into doing uh, new things, uh, especially with a Rushi, where there are so many different um, finishes on these pens, you don't want to really be stifled on particular finishes, and some can take absolutely ages to produce. Uh, we're talking like three, four, five, six months, um, dependent on what you're having done, uh, with some of the quickest ones just uh, taking about a month. So, yeah, I can understand from Michael's point of view that actually, dependent on the workload he's got um, with his day job, plus also the fact that um, he is producing quite a lot of pens, allowing people to give custom work uh, may be a little bit of a challenge. So, anyway, well, let's get on to the writing sample for this pen, then we'll do a size comparison, and then I'll give you my final thoughts. Right then, ladies and gentlemen, so this is going to be a bit of a lengthy title because I've got to include the maker of the pen as well as the finish. So this is a wet and wise. And this is the modest finish. And this is a Tananuri Studio. And Karanuri. That's the actual finish for the nib. Sorry, for the um, for the pen. So the nib is an extra fine steel. And the ink, which we've got today, is a Tash ink. I'll have to check on the spinning of this. Really beautiful in this pen, and this is Fukaki Hanada. <laughs> Bit of a mouthful, that. Okay, so here comes the fun part of it. Oh, we can do a quick bang fox at the bottom as well. So we'll, we'll do that in a moment. So the line variation is pretty good. So do something like an extra fine. Just make a little bit, bit of pressure. And you can see you're getting a little bit of line variation out of there. Fox steel nibs are usually pretty springy. So as you can see, you can get a little bit of expression out of this steel nib. Obviously, nowhere near as many, nowhere near as good as perhaps using a flex nib, but not too bad. Okay, so the paper we're using is Midori, so it's going to be pretty absorbent, but it's not too bad. It's one pass. The passes, um, yeah, it's it's pretty wet. It's not too bad. Um, okay, so let's just write out the quick brown fox. Um, I've got to put that on the the top, so. Let's just make sure you guys can see this. Should have done that further up, but never mind. Okay. Perfect. Okay, so performance, solid 10 out of 10. It's absolutely fantastic. There's no skips, no hard starts. The ink feed is brilliant. Style, <laughs> 10. 
obviously I'm a little bit biased on that by the fact that you know I have purchased this pen and I'm tending to buy pens which I like but yeah the the, the finish really is absolutely uh, spectacular. Flex, I'm going to have to give it around about a 3 out of 10 but the value really is absolutely sublime and for what 430 euros you know you're, you're getting an Arushi pen which performs well and yeah absolutely brilliant so but I'll talk more about that uh, in a moment so let's just go on to doing some size comparisons and then I will finish it up with my thoughts and feelings okay okay so ladies and gentlemen um, starting from left and going to the right we have got a Cellular Pro Gear Slim and this is in the Vega finish then we've got an upcoming review coming for this uh, Pelican M600 in red tortoiseshell. Then we've got the Tamanu Studios Wit & Wise pen, which we are just looking at. And then we've got a new pen, which again is going to be coming up for review. And this is a Nina Marino for JP, um, a Malfi Limited Edition. And then we've got a Leonardo Officina Italiana Memento Zero Grande in Arco Brown. So let's just get those uncapped, and then you can see those in relation. Right ladies and gentlemen, here we go. We have got the pens now in relationship to each other and as you can see it's a, a fairly decent mid-sized pen. I would say the uh, the Amalfi by Nina Marino and the Leonardo are bigger um, but they are considered oversized pens. So yeah it's a regular sized pen. Anyway let's go over to my thoughts and feelings on this pen and then we will see you in another video. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, so what do I think about this pen? I absolutely love it. I love it to bits. Michael, you are a genius when it comes to uh, Arushi, and I very much look forward to seeing more of your videos in the future. Now, this pen is exceptionally good value for money. Okay, 430 euros might seem quite, quite a lot of money, but when you consider the amount of time and the effort which goes into the manufacturing and the craft which goes into making this pen, you have to ask yourself, well, if you saw this one with someone like Sailor or um, Nakaya, for a finish similar to this, you would be looking northwards of about £1,000. So yes, it does present excellent value for money in comparison to those companies. Now, of course, uh, Nakaya are infamous uh, for their pens, and I do own one, and I will continue to get them. But it's nice to know that there is a studio out there very much like um, Bokemondu, um, who also charges a very reasonable fee. If not, you have to wait a long time, but a very reasonable fee. But you can get some nice lacquerware between these two pens for a fraction of the price. Now, it is worth noting that Nakaya do exceptionally good value pens as well. But to get these really interesting finishes like this uh, Karanui, you will be paying a handsome, uh, handsome sum for it. Okay, so what don't I like so much about this pen? Well, actually, before I do that, one last thing. This does eye drop. Okay, so you can silicone grease up the threads and you can eye drop this pen, which if you put a gold nib on there, um, especially a flex nib, you will get a very, very nice wet writing experience. So that sums up what I like about it. What don't I like about it? Nothing. There's nothing I don't like about it. If I had to be hypercritical, I would say that maybe it would be quite nice to have uh, the pen, barrel, and the cap uh, more flush in terms of there not being any step up and just being flush all the way down. But other than that, that would have to be a very hypercritical um, sort of point. Okay, so going forwards, what have I got um, in store for you guys? Well, I've got a few things in store for you. So I've got a couple of pens, like I mentioned in the uh, size comparison, but I've also got this pen wrap to sort of uh, explore and that will be as part of a, a dual review going down the line because I can't really spend 15 minutes talking about a pen wrap. Um, but this is from Bokemondo Studios so I will have a closer look at that going down the line and also I have got a couple of pens coming up in the next few weeks. Uh, next week you can look out for a review on this pen, um, very kindly gifted to me by Peter um, who produced this pen and that will be coming up for review and I will be giving a, a nice fair assessment of this pen um, and then we will be doing the Pelican M600 in about um, two weeks time. Um, that actually reminds me, I don't think I mentioned it earlier in the video, but I will be actually doing a collaboration with Adventure Denali 
um, who you hopefully are aware of. She is another fountain pen uh, reviewer and blogger on YouTube and I'm very much looking forward to doing a dual review with her because I think that would be a really interesting sort of format. Um, she will be doing some writing samples, I'll be doing some writing samples and we're also um, possibly going to be doing a Instagram live TV um, discussion which hopefully you guys can tune in on. So that really leaves me to it. I just need to wish you a happy Christmas, a safe new year and if I don't see you before then, stay safe and goodbye for now.